Good morning. Today is the 23rd, I believe. And we will start with the daily reflection on the Old Testament. Awake, awake, put on thy strength. O Zion, put on thy beautiful garments. O Jerusalem, shake thyself from the dust. Arise and sit down. O Jerusalem, loose thyself from the bands of thy neck. O captive daughter of Zion. Isaiah 52, 1 and 2. Isaiah calls upon the people of God to wake up to a realization of who they were, who they are, and what they may become. Israel was destined for greatness, and she must shake off her complacency and her mediocrity in order to assume her royalty. As the revelations declare, put on her strength, to put on her strength is to put on the authority of the priesthood, which she, Zion, has a right to the lineage also to return to that power which she had lost. Israel will be loosed from her bands as she gathers into the true fold of God and begins once again to enjoy the re revelations of heaven. Okay, so today is Lamentations 3. And it was longer than I expected, but the verses were short. Um, but still. Anyways, um, Jeremiah, speaking for Judah, laments the calamity, but trusts in the Lord and prays for deliverance. Um, so, in the beginning, like for the first 20 verses, he's just saying, I like, what, I like this stamp. Yeah, it's a stamp. Um, he hath built, oh, my flesh and my skin hath he made old. He hath broken my bones. He hath builded against me and compassed me with gall and travail. He hath set me in dark places as they that be dead of old. He hath hedged right. me about. And it goes on about right. all these, what? What was the What? What was the basket? You went to stamp it? Oh, my stamp pads are upstairs. Um, just goes on about all these things that, that has happened to him. Um, or that it's happened to Judah. He's lamenting as Judah. I'm um, just saying all the things that have happened to them. And then it goes, my soul hath them still in remember, oh wait, remembering mine afflictions and my misery, the wormwood and the gall, my soul hath them still in remembrance and is humbled in me. This I recall to my mind, therefore I have hope. Um, the, the trials are there to humble you, and when you remember your trials or your blessings, you are humbled, which leads to repentance, and that's the stuff there. Then it goes on. Uh, let's see. The Lord is good unto them that wait for him, to the soul that seeketh him. It is good that a man should both hope and quietly wait for the salvation of the Lord. It is good for a man that he bear the yoke in his youth. He sitteth alone and keepeth silence because he hath borne it upon him. Um, I think that when, when you are humble, a humble disciple of Christ, when you do have your trials or Do kind of sit in silence and hold your peace sometimes when you're a humble follower. When when you let pride take over, you complain a bit. A bit. But there are a few verses that stood out to me particularly that I really, really liked. Verse 33, For he doth not afflict willingly, nor grieve the children of men. It's not his work in his glory to afflict us. It is not his work in his glory to bring us into despair, to see us mourn. Um, I was watching Sister Wives, the latest season, as I was crafting yesterday, and one of the wives is leaving the husband. And she's like, I don't know where I stand in my faith. I don't know where I stand here, but when I was contemplating leaving him, I was thinking, I was praying to God 
you know, what do I do? What's right? What's wrong? And she came to the realization that God is, is her parent. I, what? I want that, this one. That one? No, this one. Okay. God is her. I want all that, this one. Okay. God is her father. I like. And I like, like I like. she is a mother, she doesn't like, like to see her children like. unhappy. I like, let's open them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. I'm talking. She doesn't like to see her children unhappy, and therefore she believes that God doesn't like to see his children unhappy. And it's true. He doesn't like to see us unhappy. There. Are, are there okay. happy? Um, anyway, so he doesn't willingly afflict us. Um, and then verse 39 and 40. Wherefore doth a living man complain, a man for the punishment of his sins? Again, with the complaining. Why, why would you complain about the consequences of your own actions? You know, it's like you brought this upon yourself. It's not the, the, not a, I don't want to say a justification, but it's like, let's say Alex takes his hockey stick and whacks Zachary upside the head with it and Zachary freaking tackles him and Alex is like he tackled me it's like yeah you hit him upside the head with a hockey stick what were you expecting it's not like I guess it's the same thing because it's like what were you expecting you broke this commandment were you expecting a trophy a prize it's not gonna happen all right um then 40 says let us search and try our ways and turn again unto the Lord. Self-evaluation. Let's search. Let's look at our actions. Let's try our ways and see that it's not going to get us anywhere. Let's repent and turn again unto the Lord. And then the last few that stood out to me are 55, 56, and 57. I called upon thy name, O Lord, out of the low dungeon. Thou hast heard my voice. Hide not thine ear from my breathing at my cry. Thou drewest near in that day that I called Hello. upon thee. Thou saidest, Hello. Fear not. What, baby? I don't need this for this. This one's too big. But yeah, you can try it. Um, so he's he's praying. He's saying, Hide not thine ear at my breathing, at my cry. He's begging the Lord to hear him. You know, he's in the dungeons. He's in the lowest of low, in the gall of bitterness. Please hear me. And then he says, thou drewest near in the day that I called upon thee, thou saidest, fear not. In, in the day that I called upon thee, not a week later, not two weeks later, in the day that I called upon you, you were there, you stretched out, you reached out, you said, fear not. When we sin, we separate ourselves from God. And when we repent, he draws us in. Paper, you have paper. No, I don't. Is that it? Okay. Let's see what it has to say for chapter 3. There's just one in the Ludlow. It's for verse 44, so let's read that one. Thou hast covered thyself with a cloud that our prayers should not pass through. Uh, this message, the message of this verse has been given a modern application by Spencer W. Kimball. Eight lovely children had blessed the temple marriage of a man and woman who in later years were denied a temple recommend. They would not be so dealt with by this young bishop. Why should they be deprived and humiliated? They were less worthy than others. They argued that this bish boy bishop was too strict, too orthodox. Never would they be active, nor enter the door of that church as long as that bishop presided. They would show him, they would show him, the history of this family is tragic. The four younger ones were never baptized. The four older ones never were ordained, endowed, or, nor sealed. No missions were filled by this family. Today the parents are ill at ease, still defiant. They had covered themselves with a cloud. The righteous prayers could not pass through. Ouch. Um, I think what we're learning from Ooh. Jeremiah is pride. Pride goeth before the fall. All right. Hello. What, love? I'm learning this. I, I, 
I want this. I want to put this on the little one. On the little one. I said today was the 23rd. Yes. So now I will leave you with a prayer from a diary of prayer. <sighs> this one is Gothic Missal. Shepherd who does not sleep, keep watch and ward over thy flock of souls. Amen. And that it be not disturbed by terror of the night, sanctify it by the unseen touch of thy hand. Amen. Make the frail stalwart lift up the contrite, make the weak strong, raise up by piety, build up by charity, purify by chastity, illuminate by wisdom, save by pity. Amen. Let watchful faith win the reward of constancy in thy love, temperance of habit, providence in mercy, discipline in co of conduct. Amen. And thy merciful compassion shut not out from the splendor of thy promise, but lead to pardon him whom thou hast made thine own by grace. Amen. I just fell. All right. That was Lamentations 3. And next week we do Ezekiel. And we're skipping around a bit. We do 1, 2, and 3. Then 33, 34, 36, 37, 47. So, we are just chugging right along through the rest of the Bible. We are just... All right. Love you all. Say bye. 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 What?